for those of you I haven't met, I'm, I'm Megan Dilly. I'm the director of the Remote Work Association. Um, we've got Darren Murph with us today. He's GitLab's head of remote. Um, Darren works at the intersection of culture, process hiring, employer branding, marketing, and communication. He spent his career leading remote teams and charting remote transformations. He holds a Guinness World Record in publishing. We gotta talk more about that, Darren. Um, and authored GitLab's Remote Playbook and Living the Remote Dream, a guide to seeing the world, setting records, and advancing your career. It's so great to have you here today, Darren. Um, why don't we get started with a couple quick questions. Um, if sure. you could jump in and tell us a bit more about GitLab, um, the product, and, and what y'all are seeking to solve. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks so much for having me. I'm head of remote at GitLab. So what is GitLab? GitLab is an amazing collaboration tool for remote teams, and we deliver a single application that holds the entire DevOps platform. So a lot of software engineers and teams that build software use uh, GitLab to handle that entire tool chain, uh, but also in non-dev functions. So I'm in marketing, for example, and our marketing team uses GitLab to work asynchronously on projects. And so async tools where you can do all of your work asynchronously in one platform, obviously uh, more germane than ever now with COVID-19 and so many companies going remote. And so, yeah, we, uh, we work across the entire spectrum, non-dev and dev to help people collaborate better asynchronously. That's awesome. Um, talk to us about how you first start started getting interested in remote work and, and what that evolution has been like for you. Yeah, I kind of fell into remote work uh, eons ago now. Uh, I was the managing editor at a consumer technology publication called Engadget. And part of my job was to travel around the world to trade shows, conferences, events, interviews, things like that, and to essentially be on the ground wherever the news was happening and covering that news. So I was on a plane almost every week flying all over the world and it kind of dawned on me, I'm working remotely. I'm working from airplanes, mm -hmm. from hotel rooms, from conference centers, and I fell in love with it. That work-related travel, I was able to tack vacations onto that, bring my spouse along for a lot of the trips. It was a very empowering, very liberating type of work. Uh, I like to say that I started working remotely before it was easy to work remotely, mm -hmm. uh, before the advent of 3G, uh, when laptop batteries lasted about 30 minutes. But I've spent my entire career working remotely, and now it's really awesome to be at GitLab, where that's a core part of the DNA of the company. And uh, we're doing all that we can to educate other companies as they go remote first as well. That's awesome. And I think you bring up such a great point that, you know, remote is having a moment, but it is not new, right? Remote has yeah. been around for quite a long time, decades. Um, and so it's it's really amazing to be seeing this evolution now and getting all of the, the attention. But um, this is something people have been doing for quite a long time with success. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about where you see the remote work movement moving. Yeah. Um, this is such an interesting topic. Uh, I like to say never waste a crisis. We can't wish away the crisis that we're dealing with. All we can do is choose how we as a society will respond to this. <clears throat> and I, I'm actually really optimistic about the future of work in general and how remote and flexibility plays into that. I think what you're seeing right now is tens of millions of people are getting a taste of what is possible when you have that additional workplace flexibility, when you're not beholden to the rigid nine to five, when you're not owned by the commute, you're actually able to live a much more fulfilling life. And I've had conversations with people where four or six weeks into this work from home thing, even for people that have never done it before, they're starting to say, you know, I could, I could get used to this. I actually don't know if I could go back to the commute because suddenly I realize that commute actually isn't helping me do my job any more efficiently. And this is in a very suboptimal time. You have to remember people have been thrust into work from home with no planning, no preparation. They may not even have the tools that they need to do this. And we as a, as a society are still doing a really good job adapting to that. And I'm, I'm really proud of us for, for moving so quickly on that. I think that the global embrace of remote has been accelerated by at least 10 years because of this. And I think we're going to see some major societal shifts on the other side of it. One of which that's happening right now is people are being really introspective on how tightly their identity is tied to work. People are grappling with, well, how do I get my social quota? How do I get my social fix when I can't just go out for drinks or dinner after work? And we're realizing, well, maybe we were overlooking friends and family and community outside of work, and we might need to reassess that balance and create a more healthy, healthier ecosystem as it relates to our own identity. The second part of this is you're going to have people that are 
asked to come back to work three or four months from now. And I think you're going to have millions of people that kind of collectively look at each other and say, we just did our jobs from our homes for four months. We saw our families more. We exercised more. We slept better. Uh, how about no? And we're going to keep the job. And companies will, by that point, have laid some infrastructure for their teams to work more effectively remotely. And that's going to pay dividends for them down the road. So I think there's going to be a different dynamic of how many people actually want to go back to the office versus those who prefer to keep their default work location somewhere else. And I think the third order to that is when you have people that are in major expensive cities, San Francisco, Seattle, London, they're going to kind of look at their, their lease and think, should I really renew that here? Maybe I'm only here because of work. But now that I've proven that I can do my job from anywhere, I've decoupled geography and work. Maybe I should consider moving to a smaller mid-sized town. Maybe I should go somewhere more rural. Maybe I should actually go back to my hometown, somewhere where I could actually get invested and get deeply rooted in a community. Maybe there's something there and I'll, I'll take my job with me and I'll have better air quality, better schools and all of that once I get there. Cities are really strained right now. The infrastructure is at its breaking point. And this might actually be a blessing for those cities that really can't take another person. Their public services are strapped. Their public transit is strapped. Uh, and you have a lot of people that are in there that are very transitory anyway. So I think a lot of things are going to happen because of this. And it all stems back to remote. Companies are now in a position where they really have to get remote right. Remote is becoming a core part of their talent acquisition strategy, their talent retention strategy, and their overall operational strategy. Um, so I'm optimistic about it. Uh, I, I, it's a tragedy that we're here, but I am encouraged by how many companies are looking at this as an opportunity to do something that they've wanted to do for a long time, and they've known that this change was coming for a long time. So. They're using this time to get themselves ready for what was the future of work and is now very much the current state of work. Thank you for sharing. I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, when, when you and I were having a talk, we were, we were chatting about this 80-20 rule, right? Talk to us a bit more about how you think that 80-20 rule is shifting. And I'm very curious to see, you know, hear from you, like how you recommend companies deal with that shift um, yeah. and keeping employees, you know, still coming and engaging um, maybe on a monthly basis, whatever that might be. Make no mistake, the offices aren't going to just disappear. Um, real estate takes a long time to get rid of. Uh, and it's not necessarily the best thing to get rid of it. Like offices still have their place. But the 80-20 rule you reference is this. Currently, most people spend about 80% of their time working in the office. You really need a special excuse, a special occasion to work from home. Maybe the cable company needs to stop by your house or you're having a refrigerator delivered, something like that. I think coming out of this, you're going to have a lot of people flip that on its head, where 80% of the time they're going to be working from wherever maybe a friend's house, a relative's house, a beach somewhere, their own home, a co-working space. And then the 20% will be reserved for those special occasions where it really makes sense to go to the office. Maybe you have a quarterly strategy planning meeting, or you have a big contingent of prospective clients flying in from another region and you want to wine and dine them in the office. I think the office will become the special occasion and the default location will be the home. Companies need to Look at this not as an A versus B and us versus them, not as a competitive thing of remote versus not remote, but just see it as finally workers have another option. You have to understand that the office was never the ideal place for a lot of people to work, just as remote isn't ideal for a lot of people either. But now we're living in a world where you can't have both, but it's going to be up to leadership to lay the right infrastructure so that remote first practices and better meeting hygiene and a bias towards asynchronous, heavier documentation, all of these things that rem make remote companies tick, they're going to need to do that even if part of their company remains co-located. But the truth is remote forces you to be intentional about things that your business should be doing regardless. We just have to do it much earlier and much more intentionally. 100%. Thank you. I'm just reading a question that came in here um, from one of our participants. Do you think as more people work remotely, we'll see more opportunity for flexible working as well, not being tied to traditional nine to five Monday through Friday hours? What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. And that's the goal. GetLab has over 1,200 people in over more than 65 countries. We have no choice but to be asynchronous. We have people all over the world. So someone's day is someone's evening is someone's night. 
And as companies embrace remote and flexibility more, you're going to see less reliance on meetings, ideally. Using tools like GitLab, you can communicate and move entire projects forward without having people online at the same time. This is incredibly empowering, incredibly liberating, and it actually helps business move more quickly. You aren't beholden to a rigid nine to five, but you can allow work to happen more naturally as people come and go, depending on when they wanna structure their day. I don't think this will happen for most companies overnight, but some of the more agile, nimble, and frankly, smaller companies will be able to adapt to this much more quickly. That's great. Um, I'm curious to hear a bit more about, you know, the, the GitLab team and um, their spread across the globe and, you know, what you might be able to offer to people participating today on how people might be thinking about where they want to live and what they want to be doing with, with their more flexible work schedule. Yeah, the thing that I've been preaching to people is use your imagination. I think what I'm seeing through this is a lot of people that have been in co-located roles for their entire career, they've just kind of had their imagination turned off subconsciously. They might not have even known it, but it's one of those things that you kind of have to numb yourself to the commute because if you ever recognize how much of that is is just cannibalizing your life, it's, it's not going to be comfortable. You and I were talking uh, in preparation for this, but if you use tally marks to tally up how many weekends are in the average human life, you can fit all of them on the front and back of one sheet of paper, one. So if you're in a co-located role where you're beholden to a nine to five and a commute five days a week, you're essentially only living for the weekend and you're worth more than that. And I think in mass, people are starting to realize that there's the, the, the onion is starting to be peeled back. And they're going to ask themselves, do I really need to live in this major urban center when suddenly work and innovation can happen anywhere? Startups are closing seed rounds over Zoom. You don't even have to meet someone for these things to happen. So all of the myths that used to exist about what has to happen in person, a lot of that's being broken down. And don't get me wrong. I love in person. It's killing me not to be able to fly and travel right now. I cannot wait to get back on the plane and go. But it's all about flexibility. It's not that offices need to go away. We just need to be more adaptable to people being people and integrating work into their lives because that will inevitably pour back into the business. That 100%. Um, so it looks like we've got about two minutes left um, before we close this session. Um, if anyone has questions for us, you can go ahead and, and input them into the chat. Um, Darren would love to answer them. I do see one comment about the GitLab remote playbooks. Perfect. So, to that. so if you go to allremote.info, that will take you into the remote section of GitLab's handbook. So GitLab is one of the most transparent companies in the world. All of our processes and protocols are available in our public handbook. If you printed it out, it would be over 5,000 pages. But there's a lot of those pages dedicated to remote. So if you go to allremote.info, the very top, you'll see our remote playbook. So I was the lead author on that. We have a ton of amazing de designers on our team that package that up. Go there, download that. It's our best advice, our best tips for both companies and workers that have become suddenly remote, how to wrap your head around it, how to stabilize, and also how to share with others in a way that will help them understand the perks and benefits of remote. Because a lot of people are scared of what they don't understand. And remote can be scary when you don't understand it. So go there, check out our, our guidance, check out our literature. And if you have any suggestions for making it better, it's open source, it's version control. You can make a merge request to any of those pages. Assign it to me. I would love the feedback. 